So, Castlevania 64. That, that classic game that everyone loves. Before I go into this, I'm, I'm going to address the, the internet as a whole. I, I feel like when talking about games that are not liked or universally sort of given a negative response, there's a lot of people very quick to try and defend those kinds of games. I feel like, can we be on the same page on this one internet and just say that Castlevania 64 and Legacy of Darkness, they're not good games and I don't think they're really worth your time defending. They're, they're not good. Why are they not good? Well, let's let's start with the most obvious thing. It's it's 1998 or something yeah. at this time. No, 99. 99 yeah. So it's 1999. 3D gaming is like you know, is a couple of years into its inception and as we all know at this time, most 3D games didn't play very well. Okay. This this game has all the this game has all the signs of a typical 3D game from that point that doesn't play well. The camera hates you. It is possessed by Dracula himself and is trying at all angles to ruin you. The actual like game feel is just not there. You move in a really odd fashion that just doesn't feel right when you. Yeah. I, I can't think of a way to describe it. it just doesn't feel right Bad when you're game playing. Feel. Yeah. And then the control scheme, because it's on a Nintendo 64 controller, has aged horrendously. I... <laughs> there's so many things with the control scheme that just, just feel asinine. Legacy of Darkness, for example. So most... anyone that never had an N64, you had the three light like, prongs. Yeah. So you had the one on the left, which then was for certain games. You you basically chose between holding the one in the center for games that involved the analog stick, or holding the one on the left for games involving just primarily using the D-pad. Castlevania 64 and Legacy of Darkness kind of want their cake and eat it, because for some reason, the L button is used for certain things. Mm. But the L button's all the way on the other end of the controller, like... So, so whenever I want to turn into Werewolf with Cornell, I've got to go use that button that's like... means letting go of the analog stick entirely in this 3D action platformer game. <laughs> Just the turn. It's really bizarre. I don't get why they chose to do that. It, I mean, it doesn't feel good. <laughs> I think Konami were behind in the times. So let's put it this way, because this is 1999, and we we're starting to see what 3D platformers, like, which ones work, how good they are, and where where they're going in the future. Like by this time, uh, if we were to do a quick yeah. tally, by this time we've had Metal Gear Solid has come yep. out. Tomb Raider yep. has, I mean, I, I think there's about three Tomb Raider games by this point. Yeah, I, so. I want to say that. Spyro has happened. Mm -hmm. uh, Banjo-Kazooie? Has Banjo-Kazooie happened? It's around this time. It's happening or yeah. it's happened. Mario 64 has happened. Ocarina of Time. And Ocarina of Time has happened. So by this point, we, we kind of know what works and what doesn't work. It, it seems to me that Konami is trying to figure out what the tangible details of Castlevania are and how to transport them into 3D. Now, all the tangible details of what Castlevania is, is in the game. Like, they're all, all the things you'd expect to be there are there, but they're just not treated very well or they haven't converted at all into the 3D landscape. Like, platforming is terrible. It seems like they were trying to go for Tomb Raider, but they just yeah. don't have the stiffness or the slowness of Tomb Raider. They're going for a very... Cause it, old school because it platform. has like it has like that same level sort of structure of tomb raider where you're in a bit of an open environment mm. and you got to solve a puzzle or do some platforming to progress and then it will like basically play a cutscene or something and then lock you into the next section of the game which then in itself is its own level that yeah. seems to be how it works and it's got like a lot of ambitious ideas like yeah lots of cool there's ideas. a there's like a in-game timer like mm. Like, like an in-game clock. Yeah, and like that actually does affect certain things in the yeah. world, which is kind of cool. I or like enemies come out at night. Yeah, like stuff like that. That's cool. There's there's like the status thing, where you can turn into a fucking vampire. That's like one of the yeah. things that can happen. You can die by being bit by a vampire, 
and then literally turning into one. That's, that's kind of cool. Yeah, it's pretty or, hard, like, uh, I don't know. There's, you know, and there's a lot of, like, you can see they sort of put a lot of effort in, like, the story and things like that, but then, but then the game has fucking full damage and you just want to kill yourself. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a weird choice, like, I guess because it's a 3D platformer, Tomb Raider had full damage, so I guess they just assumed, like, we have to have it. Yeah, and, th man, I get that people, because I, I'm wait, I know you're typing, there's one guy typing, Oh, full damage makes the game more realistic. There are skeletons on fucking motorbikes in this game! And this game's set in 1844. I don't think realism was the goal here. Yeah, in Legacy of Darkness, you fight a, like a giant dragon crab thing. Yeah. It's like the first boss. There's mermen everywhere. Both of these games, 64 and Legacy of Darkness, go from like 1 to 100, like, just instantly. They give you no room to breathe. It, it's, again, where I'd say, um, I use the phrase, it's like the game wants to have its cake and eat it. The the game, at the same time, there's an atmosphere in yeah. these games. There's definitely an atmosphere. Like and in places, this game does feel, like, fantastic. For its time. But... But then, but then suddenly it like throws some really jarring thing that then just clashes horribly with everything else, like uh, like skeletons on motorbikes. It, I feel like these two games are very confused games. Is the best yeah. way to put it. They seem to be made by a team who weren't maybe as like experienced with 3D as other people were. Yeah. It was a Kobe office, I think. Uh, what were they called? Well, it, it was it was K-Set. It was basically the people that did Circle of the Moon. Oh boy. Well, not the people, but the like developers of Circle of the Moon. And we we've all heard my thoughts on that game. It's a strange game is the best way to put Castlevania 64, especially looking back at it now. Anyway, Legacy of Darkness, which was like a sequel to Castlevania 64. That came out six months later. It's it's basically the same game. I think it's kind of treated mainly as like a special edition of 64 because it throws in a bunch of stuff that they didn't put in the original game. Like you play as Cornell in that one. And the werewolf. Yeah, and he was supposed to be a playable character in the original or was meant to be somewhere in the in the first one. The first one you play is just Reinhardt, who's like just a Belmont whip dude, but he's not actually a Belmont. He's a another one of these guys with a whip. Toys R Us, you know, Belmont. Yeah, he, it, just another one of these guys with a whip that isn't a Belmont, because apparently Belmonts aren't cool anymore. And um, Carrie, I think, is the, uh, the girl's name, mm. who arguably is probably the most useful character in the game, because she just has that weird overpowered homing projectile that just makes mm. combat irrelevant. Which is great because combat's yeah, really difficult in this, in this game. It's just annoying. Very clunky. Yeah, like it's not difficult because it's it's a challenge. It's well, no, it's difficult because it's uh, like so hard to control this yeah, game the camera, all the time. It's, it's the camera. It's the spamming. It's the frame rate as yeah, well. That's not great either. And oh god, so the uh, special uh, Legacy of Darkness actually had had the expansion pack mm. support. Like, so you could get a higher resolution if you plugged in the expansion pack. But if you do that, the frame rate just basically just dies. It, yeah. The frame rate just goes, oh, okay, goodbye. I'm, g I'm going to bed now. And you're like, come back, frame rate. No, nah, I'm going to a different game now. <laughs> I've had enough. You've put Oof. the expansion pack in. <laughs> so not, not fun. <laughs> no. It's a game that has no rules. It comes from a, a lawless Western style time of 3D game design where nothing was set completely in stone and people were trying to convert these successful 2D games into 3D and some games just didn't make the cut. <laughs> would, you, would you agree that it's at least interesting to look into? If you were an archaeologist. <laughs> If you were a gaming archaeologist. Which I, I would say I possibly am. <laughs> sure, sure. This this game is more interesting to look at than to play, definitely. Because uh, mm. playing it, as I've just experienced from playing it, probably like an hour of Legacy of Darkness, bad, 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 not good. It was a terrible time. I hate myself. The game made me, made me wish I was playing Bloodlines again. <laughs> okay, well, I guess it makes you appreciate Bloodlines a bit more. <laughs> Yeah, but it's because he's just a bigger asshole with nothing to offer me. <laughs> oh dear. I kind of respect at least how many ideas it had, uh, mm. but that's really all I can all I can give it. 
Castlevania 64 and Legacy of Darkness. Then don't play them. Play, 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 play Ocarina of Time. Wait for the keyboard, man. Whoa, Ocarina of Time's overrated. Ocarina of Time is actually playable. <laughs> More so than this game. <laughs> I can actually play that game. <laughs> Actually, screw N64 games. Just yeah, they have not go, aged well. Go play fucking I don't know what what's the new what's the new kid on the block in terms of like action Fortnite? adventure games. <laughs> yeah, go play Fortnite. Whatever the fuck that is. I, I'm I'm an old man. I don't know. I don't understand this shit. <laughs> go play go play Devil May Cry Free on the fucking HD collection. Do that. It's a pretty good game. How'd you uh, end it then? Well, we ended it. When? You know when. Die, monster!